troops, Roxy here and welcome to Roxy Plays Games and welcome back to part 2 of Airport Sim. Before I get into today's video I want to do my usual thank you, so thank you for everyone who has liked my previous videos and thank you for everyone who has subscribed to the channel, as always it is really really appreciated. Right, um, cracking on from yesterday. We went through the tablet and the following. We had a quick look at the weather in game as well, which is uh, pretty damn good, if I'm honest. Uh, we're just going to get straight into it. Um, we're going to try and get as much done as we can in the next half an hour, 40 minutes or so. Uh, and we're starting off with Marshall. Marshalling. See how good this bit is, eh? In this tutorial, you will learn how to work as an aircraft marshaller. Some of the gates are equipped with an automatic visual docking guidance system, or AVDGS, which, just like a marshaller, except digital, also guides an aircraft correctly into parking gates. The remaining stands that do not have this system are handled by a member of ground crew to marshal aircraft in. The goal is for the marshaller to assist the pilot in accurately maneuvering the aircraft onto the correct parking tee. The cockpit crew sit above the main wheel of the aircraft and don't have clear visibility to provide an exact idea of its location. So it's crucial this process is accurately managed from the outside to result in the most correct parking position, allowing equipment such as jetways to properly and safely connect to the aircraft. As you can see, the correct points, or parking tees, are marked on the central line where the aircraft is supposed to park. Each aircraft should stop with its front wheel on the line. At Vagar, there are special cases where the lines are painted and marked differently than usual. Pilots must make an almost 90 degree turn so that the ground markings are visible correctly when they approach the stand head on and the lines are marked by perpendicular lines or lines that mark the end or beginning of a turn. Each gate is marked by a white or red line. No objects or vehicles should be present within their range unless the gate is specifically not in use. As you can see at the first stand, there are cones lying there. Your task is to clear the stand and move them to a safe place. We have a designated area where you must carry the cones to. Right, before I carry on with this video, I've flown into this area uh, on a number of occasions and it is a fantastic location to, uh, to come into. So generally, you will come in from here, especially the UK. Just to give you an idea, Scotland is kind of in in that direction, roughly. Somewhere over that direction. Can't obviously remember exactly the direction. But I've flown in, like I say, many, many, many a time. And you have to kind of... You either come up this valley and then around, or you come over here and then through. But it's a really, really tricky landing. And it's not that long, and it kind of... Oh, Go back to your game area. Oh man, it's not going to let me run over there. Well, that's a shame. Um, but essentially, kind of dips off down the end there. Um, yeah, very very cool. Um, it's a shame that I can't. I wonder if it'll let me if I'm staying on the uh, where the planes can go. Yeah, just down there. It kind of it's a sea. You've got the sea there over these kind of hills or small mountains is it's sea all the way around so it's an island basically uh, and it's really really cool there's a road that's kind of running along the side of here and it goes around that direction it's probably not going to have the detail to be honest because obviously the sim is just about um, <clears throat> ground control or ground crew stuff rather than uh, everything else, but yeah, just sort of give you the, give you the little lowdown on that. Right, we need to move uh, the cones. 
sorry for that little distraction there, but yeah, this is a fantastic. I said in the last episode, what would be really cool would be to mix this with Flight Sim or X Plane 12 as it is now, um, or out now, as well as um, X Plane 11, but kind of mix the two multiplayer because this is multiplayer as well, so you can have multiple people doing this side of things. Um, but yeah, kind of, I, I, I want to make a whole video of ground crew setting the plane up, getting it all sorted out, fuel and everything, GPU, everything like that, Without, presuming that you do all that sort of stuff, I'm guessing you do. Then from inside the plane, on flight sim, doing all of the inside bit, getting it all ready. Um, getting the crew in. What would be really cool is having the uh, flight attendant simulator when that comes out. Having that going on as well, but obviously that's not out yet, so if it even comes out. Um, and then doing your flight, and then when you land, you then switch back over to the ground crew to accept the plane in. Oh, it's a genius idea. Really is a genius idea, but it'll take a little bit of work because obviously the planes aren't going to look exactly the same and they're not going to have the same livery on, although you can customise your livery in this game, so that's a good thing, uh, as well as in a Microsoft Flight Simulator. Right, let's take these over here. Okay. Press Y to enter Marshall mode. The aircraft has now positioned itself at the base of the stand. Guide it to the second T, which is highlighted. Remember that the parked aircraft's front wheels must be on the line, and the aircraft itself should be as parallel to it as possible. Follow the controls displayed on screen to guide the aircraft. Okay, this is cool. Alright, let's get it guided in. Left a bit. Left a bit more. Left a bit more. Slow down. Right a bit. And stop. Uh, straightforward and simple it's not instant stop just to let you know um, I was holding that down it didn't stop immediately but obviously it's not gonna stop immediately gonna take a little while right what have we got next uh, chocks and cones look at this one hopefully we can get a few of these in um, and as I mentioned in the last episode I'm putting these up uh, each day until it's all done so that there's not a, a massive I was going to put them all up on the same day but um, I'm not going to get it all recorded it's currently 3 a.m. Um, here uh, obviously by the time that I st stop the recording put it on to or get it uploaded onto YouTube that takes a little while do all of the description and everything that's taken a little while so yeah, it's it's not quite as simple as just uh, recording and then or playing, recording and uploading it. So a little bit more goes into it, as you in can imagine. In this tutorial, you will learn how to secure an aircraft in its place at a gate, following standard safety procedures. You will do this with the use of chocks to be placed under all the aircraft's wheels and cones placed at critical areas around the aircraft, where we do not want curious passengers or unauthorized personnel approaching. As you can see, a plane is approaching the gate. Collect a full set of wheel chocks at the indicated area. Um, yes, so I'm not going to have the time to uh, 
split it into all the segments required and record it all because uh, it's going to take me a couple of hours I can imagine to get it all done. The aircraft has arrived at the gate and its engines and all beacon lights are switched off. You may safely approach the aircraft's front set of wheels. Place a set of chocks under the wheels. To do this, approach and point at the front wheels and press the displayed button to place a set of chocks. <coughs> yeah, that was Great. fairly straightforward. I think you've got the hang of it. Repeat the same process for the rear left and right wheel sets. Can't do it from behind. Or do I need to be in the front? Oh no, we can do now it from behind. Head over cool. to the indicated set of cones. How many do we need? One, two, three, click the displayed button four, five, six. And use the displayed button to position them. Two, to throw three, the object, four, hold five, down the displayed six. button. Six. Just like with the chocks, place the cones in their indicated areas. The order in which you do this doesn't matter. Right, it wouldn't let me put um wouldn't let me put a six down. Uh, wouldn't let me put six down, wouldn't let me pick six up, sorry, what I meant to say. And again, I'm pretty sure I just heard the APU and engines sort of winding down. I need one more cone. Put this one here. Rotate it around. Now, the bypass pin needs to be inserted into its slot on the strut of the front wheels. The purpose of this pin is to prevent the cockpit crew from having any steering control of this wheel, as it can pose a danger to the crew on the ground if moved accidentally. It also allows the ground crew to take control of steering of the aircraft by bypassing the aircraft's mm. pressurized hydraulic systems during a pushback procedure. You'll learn more about this in another tutorial. So. Now approach the front wheel and firmly insert the bypass pin in its slot indicated by the marker. Congratulations! You have just prepared and secured the aircraft for parking and further servicing. We move before now, flight. We will present you with the same scenario but in reverse. You will need to collect all the previously placed safety articles efficiently and safely. At Vagar Airport, we have a unique situation where an aircraft can leave the stand and taxi without being pushed back onto the taxiway. This means the final step of this process will be taking the bypass pin out of the front gear strut and the aircraft can go on its way. The aircraft has already been serviced and is waiting for it to be released from the ground crew's hands. Each parking gate or parking stand is identified by a red or white perimeter outline. When the aircraft is in motion and its engines are running, no unnecessary objects, vehicles or personnel should be inside this area. This is due to the risk of the aircraft colliding with a vehicle or unwanted objects being sucked into the engine. If such a situation occurs and the area is not clear, you'll be notified through your in-game tablet. Collect the cones and wheel chocks and place them in safe areas outside the parking stand's perimeter. Finally, head back over to the aircraft, remove the bypass pin and leave the area. Okay. Right, so let's collect the cones first, I guess. Can sprint by holding down the shift key. Three. Four. Five. 
And then Y to put them all down. One. Got all the cones. E yep. Make them all neat and tidy, eh? We want that. We want that. Can we crouch? No. Well, not that I know of. I know we can jump. Congratulations! You have completed the training on securing an aircraft when parked at a gate. Okay, that was simple enough. Right, what have we got next? Chocks and cones, GPU. It looks like we do get to use a GPU. Which would make sense, because that is part of the uh, ground crew stuff. sounds in this game oh just this attention to detail isn't it attention to detail Before you start you need to connect the gpu to the tow hook of the tug so that you can transport it it's quite simple you need to back up the tug so that the hook is close to coupling with the gpu then get out of the tug Approach the rear and follow the action displayed on the screen to couple them together. Okay. Seems simple enough. Uh, e and Jinan. doing this one here. I thought it was going to be that one over there. Because in this one has just got it. Man, saying that, yeah. Now, detach the GPU from the tug and go to the rear side of it, where you'll need to open the hatch revealing the control panel. I can see we're going to put the GPU here because obviously the plane just come in. Right, we need to disconnect you. We need to open this. Now, Generator startup sequence. You'll operate it using the controls displayed on the screen as we go. 
Toggle the power on button. This will activate the generator battery. Now, you'll need to hold down the engine start button for approximately three seconds until the engine starts. Well, how detailed is this? It's not just a press a button and that's it. You've got to go through the whole procedure. And the dials actually move. Oh, this is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Great. Now on the side of the GPU, there's a slot containing a cable. You need to pick up the cable and plug it into the aircraft's power socket. To pick up the cable, follow the action displayed on screen. I was about Connect to say there's nowhere. The aircraft's power socket. Nothing showing what to do then. But then it came up. Perfect. Now go back to the panel and switch the engine setting knob from idle to run. Then press the DC output button to the on position. Now notify the cockpit crew through the communication panel that they can turn off the APU and switch to GPU power. Open this panel using the controls displayed on screen. Uh, one. Navigate to the flight deck option, then APU, and then turn off the APU. Flight deck. APU. Turn off APU. Great. Now the aircraft is powered only by the GPU. And the rest of the ground crew and the aircraft crew can continue with their work. Now it's time to teach you how to disconnect an aircraft's ground power prior to departure. Obviously, we can't just unplug the cable and leave the crew without power. When you finish all your other tasks and it's time to disconnect the GPU, you'll need to inform the crew that they can start the APU. We'll teach you how to do that on this aircraft. Head over to the indicated area. Approach the aircraft from the side where the GPU is parked. Your task now is to notify the cockpit crew that they may start the APU. To do this, open the communication panel using the controls displayed on screen. Select flight deck APU and start APU. The APU's at the back here. Obviously it's all silent at the moment so you can't hear anything. So it's like a like a mini engine before you start the main engine, so to speak. That's kind of in simple terms. Uh, one flight deck APU turn on APU. Great, the crew has just started the APU. Go to the back of the aircraft, specifically under its tail, and listen to the APU startup sequence. If you want to, remove your protective headphones using the display button. To check the startup progress, open the tablet and select the aircraft you're currently at. In the task oh. table, you'll find information about the startup progress. You can even see the heat haze. You can see the heat haze coming out. Oh, that's just absolutely amazing. The APU is now fully operational. Now go to the panel and switch the DC output to off. I said we could go to the tablet, didn't it? Uh, operation. All right, yeah. Connect GPU. Connect GPU. Signal flight crew to stop APU. Okay. Um, but close. Then turn the engine switch from run to idle. 
so it's basically the opposite. Unplug the cable connected to the aircraft and place it back into the GPU. Uh, don't we want to stop the engine first? Save fuel. And then disconnect this. Great. Everything went according to plan. Now you need to return the GPU to the designated location at the parking ramp to complete the tutorial. Um, right. I don't know whether I did it and it didn't tell me, or it's missing two bits. It didn't tell me to. Ooh, didn't tell me to turn off the engine, and it didn't tell me to close the flap down. But maybe I did it, so it then didn't tell me. But surely it would have still told me, and then said well done for doing it oh we need to connect this back up before I drive off <coughs> and then park over here it sounds like the engines are starting up congratulations you've just learned how to operate the GPU after arrival and before departure of an aircraft yes I wanted to carry on, but we're starting one engine and then starting the next engine. It's just, I'm, I'm actually blown away at just how good this actually is. I'm actually blown away. Um, right, so episode one we did tablet and follow me. Um, this episode we've done Marshall, Chock and Cone, GPU, and we're coming up to half an hour. I think I could probably... Uh, how long is this going to take? I don't know how... That's thing see, I've not played it, so I don't know how long each one's going to take. And I don't want... Again, I don't want to take... If if I was on 20 minutes, I'd do this one. 25, 22, 23 minutes, I'd do this one. But it's 27 minutes. Um, If this takes 10 minutes... Gonna be 37. Right, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, what have we got next after that? Catering. Uh, they're gonna be similar, aren't they? Vehicle, movie up bits, loading passengers, loading food, shuttling people. Right, we'll leave it. I think we'll leave it. It's just under half an hour. That's a, a nice chunky time. Um. And then we'll try and get D3 done in the next episode. And then at least a jetway. Oh, we've got still got a lot to go. Right, we'll 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 leave it there. Um This game is just it's just blown me away. Actually blown me away. Um currently on Steam came out two days ago or three days ago for you in fact I'm saying two days, three days ago. It is as far as from when I'm recording, not from when you're watching. Um, but definitely recommended if you're a flight sim enthusiast um, or a flight management enthusiast there's loads of loads of games out there but this one is just absolutely br brilliant the graphics the sound the engagement the interaction so far like I say I'm just doing a tutorial I, the gameplay could be completely pants but I doubt it. If the tutorials is this good, the gameplay is just going to be, you know, the next level. Apart from that guy walking a very weird way, and it looked like he didn't have any eyes. Uh, but either way, uh, I'm going to call it an end of an episode. So thanks for watching as always. Hit those buttons. Hit them now. Let's get those um, numbers up to 500 as soon as we possibly can. We don't have much time. It's the on recording it's 21st uh, we're running out of time to get to 500 um, and obviously I want to give more people a gift card because after midnight on the 1st of November um, if we haven't reached 500 it's going to drop back down to 1 but if we do it before that time the gift card giveaway will be 3 gift cards Bigger chance of winning. I know there's 500 people, but you just never know. It could be you. So stay safe. I'll speak to you soon. And goodbye.